Section six of the works of Edgar Allan Poe, Raven Edition, Volume four. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Libby Gone. How to write a Blackwood article by Edgar Allan Poe. In the name of the prophet figs, cry of the Turkish fig peddler. I presume everybody has heard of me. My name is the Signora Psyche Zenobia. I know this to be a fact. Nobody but my enemies ever calls me Suki Snobs. I have been assured that Suki is but a vulgar corruption of Psyche, which is good Greek and means the soul. That's me, I'm all soul. And sometimes a butterfly, which latter meaning undoubtedly alludes to my appearance in my new crimson satin dress, with the sky-blue Arabian mantelette and the trimmings of green agraffas, and the seven flounces of orange-coloured auriculas. As for snobs, any person who should look at me would be instantly aware that my name wasn't snobs. Miss Tabitha Turnip propagated that report through sheer envy. Tabitha Turnip, indeed! Oh, the little wretch! But what can we expect from a turnip? Wonder if she remembers the old adage about blood out of a turnip, etc. Mem, put her in mind of it the first opportunity. Mem again, pull her nose. Where was I? Ah, I have been assured that snobs is a mere corruption of Zenobia, and that Zenobia was a queen. So am I. Dr. Moneypenny always calls me the queen of the hearts. And that Zenobia, as well as Psyche, is good Greek, and that my father was a Greek, and consequently I have a right to our patronymic, which is Zenobia, and not by any means snobs. Nobody but Tabitha Turnip calls me Suki Snobs. I am the Signora Psyche Zenobia. As I said before, everybody has heard of me. I am that very Signora Psyche Zenobia so justly celebrated as corresponding secretary to the Philadelphia Regular Exchange Teetotal Young Bell's Letters, Universal Experimental Bibliographical Association to Civilize Humanity. Dr. Moneypenny made the title for us, and says he chose it because it sounded big like an empty rum puncheon. A vulgar man that sometimes, but he's deep. We all signed the initials of the society after our names, in the fashion of the RSA, Royal Society of Arts, the SDUK, Society for the Diffusion of Useful Knowledge, etc., etc. Dr. Moneypenny says that the S stands for stale, and that the D-U-K spells duck, but it don't. That SDUK stands for stale duck, and not for Lord Brougham Society. But then, Dr. Moneypenny is such a queer man that I am never sure when he is telling me the truth. At any rate, we always add to our names the initials P-R-E-T-T-Y-B-L-U-E-B-A-T-C-H. That is to say, Philadelphia Regular Exchange Teetotal Young Bell's Letters Universal Experimental Bibliographical Association to Civilize Humanity. One letter for each word, which is a decided improvement upon Lord Brougham. Dr. Moneypenny will have it that our initials give our true character, but for my life I can't see what he means. Notwithstanding the good offices of the doctor and the strenuous exertions of the association to get itself into notice, it met with no very great success until I joined it. The truth is, the members indulged in too flippant a tone of discussion, the papers read every Saturday evening were characterized less by depth than buffoonery. They were all whipped syllabub. There was no investigation of first causes, first principles. There was no investigation of anything at all. There was no attention paid to that great point, the fitness of things. In short, there was no fine writing like this. It was all low, very. No profundity, no reading, no metaphysics, nothing which the learned call spirituality, and which the unlearned choose to stigmatize as can't. Dr. M. says I ought to spell can't with a capital K, but I know better. When I joined the society, it was my endeavor to introduce a better style of thinking and writing, and all the world knows how well I have succeeded. We get up as good papers now in the P-R-E-T-T-Y-B-L-U-E-B-A-T-C-H as any to be found even in Blackwood. I say Blackwood because I have been assured that the finest writing upon every subject is to be discovered in the pages of that justly celebrated magazine. 
we now take it for a model upon all themes and are getting into rapid notice accordingly after all it's not so very difficult a matter to compose an article of the genuine blackwood stamp if only one goes properly about it of course i don't speak of the political articles everybody knows how they are managed since dr moneypenny explained it mr blackwood has a pair of tailor shears and three apprentices who stand by him for orders one hands him the times another the examiner and a third a cully's new compendium of slang wang mr b merely cuts out and intersperses it is soon done nothing but examiner slang wang and times then times slang wang and examiner then times examiner and slang wang but the chief merit of the magazine lies in its miscellaneous articles and the best of these comes under the head of what dr moneypenny calls the bizarreries whatever that may mean and everybody else calls the intensities this is a species of writing which i have long known how to appreciate although it is only since my late visit to mr blackwood deputed by the society that i have been made aware of the exact method of composition this method is very simple but not so much so as the politics upon my calling at mr b s and making known to him the wishes of the society he received me with great civility took me into his study and gave me a clear explanation of the whole process my dear madam said he evidently struck with my majestic appearance for i had on the crimson satin with the green agraffas and the orange-coloured auriculas my dear madam said he sit down the matter stands thus in the first place your writer of intensities must have very black ink and a very big pen with a very blunt nib and mark me miss psyche zenobia he continued after a pause with the most expensive energy and solemnity of mannered mark me that pen must never be mended herein madam lies the secret the soul of intensity i assume upon myself to say that no individual of however great genius ever wrote with a good pen understand me a good article you may take it for granted that when manuscript can be read it is never worth reading it is a leading principle in our faith to which if you cannot readily assent our conference is at an end he paused but of course as i had no wish to put an end to the conference i assented to a proposition so very obvious and one too of whose truth i had all along been sufficiently aware he seemed pleased and went on with his instructions it may appear invidious in me miss psyche zenobia to refer you to any article or set of articles in the way of model or study yet perhaps i may as well call your attention to a few cases let me see there was the dead alive a capital thing the record of a gentleman's sensations when entombed before the breath was out of his body full of tastes terror sentiment metaphysics and erudition you would have sworn that the writer had been born and brought up in a coffin then we had the confessions of an opium-eater fine very fine glorious imagination deep philosophy acute speculation plenty of fire and fury and a good spicing of the decidedly unintelligible that was a nice bit of flummery and went down the throats of the people delightfully they would have it that coleridge wrote the paper but not so it was composed by my pet baboon juniper over a rummer of holland and water hot without sugar this i could scarcely have believed had it been anybody but mr blackwood who assured me of it then there was the involuntary experimentalist all about a gentleman who got baked in an oven and came out alive and well though certainly done to a turn and then there was the diary of a late physician where the merit lay in good rant and indifferent greek both of them taking things with the public and then there was the man in the bell a paper by the by miss zenobia which i cannot sufficiently recommend to your attention it is the history of a young person who goes to sleep under the clapper of a church bell and is awakened by its tolling for a funeral the sound drives him mad and accordingly pulling out his tablets he gives a record of his sensations sensations are great things after all should you ever be drowned or hung be sure to make a note of your sensations they will be worth to you ten guineas a sheet if you wish to write forcibly miss zenobia pay minute attention to the sensations 
"'That I certainly will, Mr. Blackwood,' said I. "'Good,' he replied. "'I see you are a pupil after my own heart, "'but I must put you au fait in all the details necessary "'in composing what may be denominated a genuine Blackwood article "'of the sensation stamp, "'the kind which you will understand me to say "'I consider the best for all purposes. "'The first requisite is to get yourself into such a scrape "'as no one has ever gotten into before.' the oven for instance that was a good hit but if you have no oven or big bell at hand and if you cannot conveniently tumble out of a balloon or be swallowed up in an earthquake or get stuck fast in a chimney you will have to be contented with simply imagining some similar misadventure i should prefer however that you have the actual fact to bear you out nothing so well assists the fancy as an experimental knowledge of the matter in hand truth is strange you know stranger than fiction besides being more to the purpose here i assured him that i had an excellent pair of garters and would go and hang myself forthwith good he replied do so although hanging is somewhat hackneyed perhaps you might do better take a dose of brandreth's pills and then give us your sensations however my instructions will apply equally well to any variety of misadventure and in your way home you may easily get knocked in the head or run over by an omnibus or bitten by a mad dog or drowned in a gutter but to proceed having determined upon your subject you must next consider the tone or manner of your narration there is the tone didactic the tone enthusiastic the tone natural all commonplace enough but then there is the tone laconic or curt which has lately come into much use it consists in short sentences somehow thus can't be too brief can't be too snappish always a full stop and never a paragraph then there is too the tone elevative diffusive and interjectional some of our best novelists patronize this tone the words must be all in a whirl like a humming top and make a noise very similar which answers remarkably well instead of meaning this is the best of all possible styles where the writer is in too great a hurry to think the tone metaphysical is also a good one if you know any big words this is your chance for them talk of the ionic and eleatic schools of architas gorgias and alcmaeon say something about objectivity and subjectivity be sure and abuse a man named locke turn up your nose at things in general and when you let slip anything a little too absurd you need not be at the trouble of scratching it out but just add a footnote and say that you are indebted for the above profound observation to the critic der reinem vernunft or to the metaphysiker anfangsgründer der noterwissenschaft this would look erudite and 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 frank there are various other tones of equal celebrity but i shall mention only two more the tone transcendental and the tone heterogeneous in the former the merit consists in seeing into the nature of affairs a very great deal farther than anybody else the second sight is very efficient when properly managed a little reading of the dial will carry you a great way eschew in this case big words get them as small as possible and write them upside down look over channing's poems and quote what he says about a fat little man with a delusive show of can put in something about the supernal oneness don't say a syllable about the infernal twoness above all study innuendo hint everything assert nothing if you feel inclined to say bread and butter do not by any means say it outright you may say anything and everything approaching to bread and butter you may hint at buckwheat cake or you may even go so far as to insinuate oatmeal porridge but if bread and butter be your real meaning be cautious my dear miss psyche and not on any account not on any account to say bread and butter i assured him that i should never say it again as long as i lived he kissed me and continued as for the tone heterogeneous it is merely a judicious mixture in equal proportions of all the other tones in the world and is consequently made up of everything deep great odd piquant pertinent and pretty let us suppose now you have determined upon your incidents and tone the most important portion in fact the soul of the whole business is yet to be attended to i allude to the filling up 
It is not to be supposed that a lady, or a gentleman either, has been leading the life of a bookworm. Yet, above all things, it is necessary that your article have an air of erudition, or at least afford evidence of extensive general reading. Now, I'll put you in the way of accomplishing this point. See here. Pulling down some three or four ordinary-looking volumes, and opening them at random. By casting your eye down almost any page of any book in the world, you will be able to perceive at once a host of little scraps of either learning or bel espritism, which are the very thing for the spicing up of a Blackwood article. You might as well note down a few while I read them to you. I shall make two divisions. First, piquant facts for the manufacture of similes, and second, piquant expressions to be introduced as occasion may acquire. Write now and as I wrote he dictated. Piquant facts for similes. There were originally but three muses, Melite, Memne, Aode. Meditation, memory, and singing. You may make a good deal of that little fact if properly worked. You see, it is not generally known and looks recherché. You must be careful and give the thing with a downright improviso air. Again, the river Alpheus passed beneath the sea, and emerged without injury to the purity of its waters. Rather stale, that, to be sure, but if properly dressed and dished up, it will look quite as fresh as ever. Here is something better. The Persian iris appears to some persons to possess a sweet and very powerful perfume, while to others it is perfectly scentless. Fine, that, and very delicate. Turn it about a little, and it will do wonders. We'll have something else in the botanical line. There's nothing goes down so well, especially with the help of a little Latin. Right. The epidendrum flows aris of Java, bears a very beautiful flower, and will live when pulled up by the roots. The natives suspend it by a cord from the ceiling and enjoy its fragrance for years. That's capital. That will do for the similes. Now for the piquant expressions. Piquant expressions. The venerable Chinese novel, Ju Kiao Li, good. By introducing these few words with dexterity, you will evince your intimate acquaintance with the language and literature of the Chinese. With the aid of this, you may get along without either Arabic or Sanskrit or Chickasaw. There is no passing muster, however, without Spanish, Italian, German, Latin, and Greek. I must look you out a little specimen of each. Any scrap will answer, because you must depend upon your own ingenuity to make it fit into your article. Now write. Aussi tendre que Zaire, as tender as Zaire French. Alludes to the frequent repetition of the phrase, la tendre Zaire, in the French tragedy of the name. Properly introduced, it will show not only your knowledge of the language, but your general reading and wit. You can say, for instance, that the chicken you were eating, write an article about being choked to death by a chicken bone, was not altogether aussi tendre que Zaire. Right. Van muerte tan escondida que non te siente venir, porque el placer del morir no me estorne a dar la vida. That's Spanish from Miguel de Cervantes. Come quickly, O oh death, but be sure, and don't let me see you coming, lest the pleasure I shall feel at your appearance should unfortunately bring me back to life again. This you may slip in quite apropos when you are struggling in the last agonies with the chicken bone. Write, Il pover uomo che non son era accorto, andava combattendo e era morto. That's Italian, you perceive, from Ariosto. It means that a great hero in the heat of combat, not perceiving that he has been fairly killed, continued to fight valiantly, dead as he was. The application of this in your own case is obvious, for I trust, Miss Psyche, that you will not neglect to kick for at least an hour and a half after you have been choked to death by that chicken bone. Please to write, Und sterb ich doch, no sterb ich denn, durch sie, durch sie. That's German from Schiller. And if I die, at least I die, for thee, for thee. Here it is clear that you are apostrophizing the cause of your disaster, the chicken. 
indeed what gentleman or lady either of sense wouldn't die i should like to know for a well-fattened capon of that ripe molucca breed stuffed with capers and mushrooms and served up in a salad bowl with orange jellies en mosaic right you can get them by the way at tortoni's right if you please here is a nice little latin phrase and rare too one can't be too recherche or brief in one's latin it is getting so common ignoratio elenchi he has committed an ignoratio elenchi that is to say he has understood the words of your proposition but not the idea the man was a fool you see some poor fellow whom you address while choking with that chicken bone and who therefore didn't precisely understand what you were talking about throw the ignoratio elenchi in his teeth and at once you have him annihilated if he dares to reply you can tell him from lucan here it is that speeches are mere anemonae verborum anemone words the anemone with great brilliancy has no smell or if he begins to bluster you may be down upon him with insomnia jovis reveries of jupiter a phrase which silius italicus see here applies to thoughts pompous and inflated this will be sure and cut him to the heart he can do nothing but roll over and die will you be kind enough to write in greek we must have something pretty from demosthenes for example anere ophelgon kai palin makesetai there is a tolerably good translation of it in hudibras for he that flies may fight again which he can never do that slain in a blackwood article nothing makes so fine a show as your greek the very letters have an air of profundity about them only observe madam the astute look of that epsilon that phi ought certainly to be a bishop was ever there a smarter fellow than that omicron just a twig that tau in short there is nothing like greek for genuine sensation paper in the present case your application is the most obvious thing in the world wrap out a sentence with a huge oath and by the way of ultimatum at the good-for-nothing dunder-headed villain who couldn't understand your plain english in relation to the chicken bone he'll take the hint and be off you may depend upon it these were all the instructions mr b could afford me upon the topic in question but i felt they would be entirely sufficient i was at length able to write a genuine blackwood article and determined to do it forthwith in taking leave of me mr b made a proposition for the purchase of the paper when written but as he could offer me only fifty guineas a sheet i thought it better to let our society have it than sacrifice it for so paltry a sum notwithstanding this niggardly spirit however the gentleman showed his consideration for me in all other respects and indeed treated me with the greatest civility his parting words made a deep impression upon my heart and i hope i shall always remember them with gratitude my dear miss zenobia he said while the tears stood in his eyes is there anything else i can do to promote the success of your laudable undertaking let me reflect it is just possible that you may not be able so soon as convenient to get yourself drowned or choked with a chicken bone or or hung or bitten by a but stay now let me think of it there are a couple of very excellent bulldogs in the yard fine fellows i assure you savage and all that indeed just the thing for your money they'll have you eaten up auricula and all in less than five minutes here's my watch and then only think of the sensations here i say tom peter dick you villain let out those but i was really in a great hurry and had not another moment to spare i was reluctantly forced to expedite my departure and accordingly took leave at once somewhat more abruptly i admit than strict courtesy would have otherwise allowed it was my primary object in quitting mr blackwood to get into some immediate difficulty pursuant to his advice and with this view i spent the greater part of the day in wandering about edinburgh seeking for desperate adventures adventures adequate to the intensity of my feelings and adapted to the vast character of the article i intended to write in this excursion i was attended by one negro a servant pompey and my little lapdog diana whom i had brought with me from philadelphia it was not however until late in the afternoon that i fully succeeded in my arduous undertaking 
an important event then happened of which the following Blackwood article, in the tone heterogeneous, is the substance and result. End of section 6